What's the biggest role you've had in a movie? The biggest role would be uh, A Patient Man, which is a, a recent um, drama thriller um, directed by Kevin Ward that came out this year on iTunes and Apple and Amazon and others. How did you meet Kevin? So Kevin was from Orlando, so we knew a lot of the same people. I'm sure, we, were, we were talking recently, I'm, like, I'm trying to remember if I met him in Orlando. I think I did once. And then when he moved out here, you know, we'd see each other at parties and we were, we were friendly. I wouldn't say we were friends, but I knew who he was and would say hi at a party and talk for a little bit. Um, I knew his wife a little more, I think, Katie. Um, that's how I, how I met him, as part of the Orlando Mafia, as they call it. <laughs> how did he present you with the script? So Kevin um, <clears throat> was looking for help casting it, and my wife is a casting director. And so they were looking at you know, different ideas for who could play what. The, the guy that played my part in the trailer, um, Kevin made a trailer earlier on with a diff different cast. Um, he wanted to use that guy, Will Bowles is his name, he's a great actor. Uh, he was unavailable, so he's like, oh, maybe I get some help from Leah. So Leah gave him some ideas, and um, and she mentioned to me, he goes, you know, are you interested in this? You, it, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll read it. And then I read it, and I was like, this is really good. He's going to make this? Because I knew the budget was super low, and I'm reading the script, and I'm like, I don't see how we can do that for that budget. But uh, So she said, okay, I'll put your name in. And so she pitched me with some other people, and he liked the idea. And then my other friend, Ben Rock, who's a feature director. He directed a Alien Raiders, which is a great B-horror movie. <clears throat> He's part of the Blair Witch team. He was the production designer on that. Ben, who I've worked with a bunch, told Kevin, you know, I think Jonathan, you know, I know you know him as funny, but he has a dark side too. I think he'd really help, help, help the project. So because of my wife and because of my friend Ben, I think Kevin was like, all right. So we went and had lunch at um, the Smokehouse <laughs> over in Toluca Lake, and I think I had a steak salad, and he's like, well, let's do it. I'm like, okay. And that was it. And the film shot in Sacramento mm -hmm. or Los Angeles? Sacramento and Los Angeles. Um, all the train scenes were on the real train in Sacramento. Um, and then all, I think almost everything else was in Los Angeles. How was that to film a low budget movie in that part of the state? Because there's such a difference in, if you cross certain. It was areas. great. I mean, the there were challenges, of course. I mean, they had a permit to shoot on the train but they did not have a permit to tell anyone to get off or to move. Oh, no. <laughs> so that was challenging. Also challenging is every 15 seconds, the train, the audio, you'd hear, the next stop is so-and-so. So in the movie, you'll see these you know, long scenes between myself and Tate Ellington, who plays the other character. And they seem like seamless scenes, but in reality, it's every 10 seconds, we have to stop and back up a line and go, stop, and back up a line and go, oh, someone just got on, now continuity's out, okay, now we have to wait for this person to leave, and they do, back, mm, but the noise, so the combination of the noise of the train, the announcements, and different people getting on in front and in the way of shots made it tough, but now nah, he pulled it off. How did people react to you folks filming on the train? Were they interested? Not in really, no? they didn't, just were like, oh, huh. okay. One of the, Fun stories about shooting in Sacramento is it was a nighttime scene on their main strip where all the clubs were, and it was a Friday night. I forget the name of the street. And I had to take my bike and get onto uh, the train, and it pulls away. It's near the beginning of the movie, I think, and then again at the end. So Friday night, Sacramento, you know, two cameras, sound guy, you know, little, little small crew and me, and we're going to get the shop, but there was a police vehicle in the way of what he wants and he doesn't want it's it's in the way so kevin the director walks up to the cop car knocks on the window goes hey uh we're making a movie can you guys move oh, like, wow. oh yeah sure oh, and they moved and i was like oh my god would never happen in los angeles wow they would take you to jail in los angeles if you asked a cop car to move for your movie <laughs> wow. without a permit no permits by the way how close do you were to the capitol like the, the actual buildings the train? Um, so I, I'm trying, I don't think we were near the Capitol building much. We were near the downtown, whatever that party club where all the bars are, and you hear the music coming out. I don't, I don't remember where that was. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Interesting. And then you did all of the bike riding scenes here. Here, yeah, the bike. Most of the uh, actually, was it anything that was near a train or a train station was probably Sacramento. And then all the bike riding down the streets was here in Los Angeles, in Burbank, and then in downtown for the nighttime stuff. How are you getting yourself in the mindset for Tom? I mean, because he's he's gone through so much. Um. Yeah, I mean, it. it you just. I forget who, who, I think it was John Goodman was being interviewed by one of those, uh, who's, who's the acting guy that's the famous guy with the beard that always... Oh, for the actor's studio, yeah. James Lipton? Maybe it was him or, or someone oh. was interviewing John Goodman and they, they asked him the same character and like, how do you get into the character? And I think his answer was, I'll pretend like I'm the guy. <laughs> but and at, at first that sounds like a, a joke answer, but in truth, if you pretend like you're somebody and you th keep, you start feeling like they would feel, you know what I mean? It's starts happening. You start actually feeling like that person. So the, the simple answer is I just pretend like I'm a guy who's had his wife killed and how horrible is that? And now I'm actually sad and then let's shoot. So that's how it worked for me. And the drudgery of this like corporate job and yeah. the office politics that aren't revealed. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've luckily knock on wood, haven't had to have too many terrible jobs. Um, but I've have, have had some where it's just like, Man, when I first came to town, I, I was a temp and I was just taking checks at a bank and putting them in order for eight hours a day. Oh, 00399 comes before 00251. And I would just, lunch, I don't know anybody. Ding, back, <laughs> just like, so I think I did that for a week, but that was enough for me to go, oh boy, I know what that is. People do that their whole lives. I, I don't know how. <laughs> Don't know how. Well, the film captured the great sort of like the monotony of that, like with the alarm and just yeah. kind of like it, not Groundhog Day where you're repeating it, but it, there was a similarity to it. Um, yeah, yeah. Kevin did a real good job at um, communicating that kind of mundane, depressing workspace. And I don't want to give away the ending, but it, it got me. I did not see that ending. Yeah, coming, it's a cool. So. It's a neat twist that people uh, um, people are surprised when they see that. Yeah, I was. I was very surprised. Sadly, well. Yeah, well, or happily, we don't know. Well, We're that's true. Away. Yeah, that's true. No, we don't want to, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you take on a serious role? So, there's probably the best answer is something along the lines of um, the, the script was so good and I considered it, but the real answer is I never get to do this. It's like I'm always doing comedy. It's always, all, and, and, it's, and even when I get parts like been on, NCIS recently and I had a part on ER and I did a thing in the bucket list and those are all dramas but I realized right when I got to set that I'm kind of the comedy in the drama you know I'm and that's like the, the recent uh, N um, uh, Chicago Med that I did it was a guy suffering from panic attacks and he has to have a brain uh, tumor removed and when you have your brain tumor removed they don't put you under you have to be awake because they need to make sure they're not scrambling your brain so I'm like, this is dramatic, this is great. And I booked it and I was so happy. And I go in there and, and I read with Oliver Platt and the director and I read the parts of the panic attack guy and they're laughing. And I go, whoa, no, no, no. And they go, no, 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 you're, you're, yeah, you're the comic relief in this. We have, the other storyline's really dark. So yours is kind of, the, I was like, oh man, even when I book a drama, I'm the, I'm the comedy guy. So there's nothing funny in this uh, <laughs> in Patient Man. He's a sad, depressed person that goes after a goal of his. So. Uh, I never have done that, and I, I never had the chance. So I was like, absolutely. I definitely want to try this. Does that happen to you even when you go to the dry cleaner? You're not even trying to be funny, but... Yeah, yeah, and people will, will recognize me from, you know, whose line or let's make a deal, and I'll be like, oh, can I get a couple more? <laughs> like, uh, not a joke. Can I have two more half and halves, please? <laughs> hey, 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 no, there's nothing funny. I just want two more half and halves for my coffee. Um, so yeah, but it, I love doing comedy and, and it's my favorite thing still. Uh, but the chance to do this was uh, an opportunity that I don't know if it'll come along again or I had to say yes to it. And the script was great too, not to belittle Kevin's uh, script, it was great. But those were the reasons. Yeah, and to go back to quiz show, that there is that scene where Ralph Fiennes is in the, the phone booth yeah, making yeah. a call yeah. and the guy, hey, hey, Oh, you too, you know. And like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it just, you know, I guess that would 
be difficult to have to be that guy all the time when you're, I mean, because people are going to see you. Yeah, I mean, it's not difficult to be that guy all the time. Um, it's great, and I love that I get to do it. But this was an opportunity that just does not come along. I do not audition for dramatic leads in feature films. <laughs> I don't. I just don't. Um, and this was, here you go. Do you want to do it? So the answer is yeah. Yeah, you feel very bad for Tom. I mean, yeah. in many ways. Yeah. You know, won't uh, give away, but yeah, there's a there's a part where, it's it, you know they say like just punish your characters. That that is one where yeah, the characters and it's unique. The way it was written too is like he, there's there's guilt involved in things that happened, and then on top of that, different things that are revealed along the way that just are just like oh man, this guy. Right. Yeah. I enjoyed the part where he did the presentation yeah. because it kind of, you, you were like, oh wow, okay, he's gonna, he really doesn't, he's at a very apathetic part in his life. And the, So the scene you're talking about is he has to give a presentation at work and he's not prepared for it and he's just gone. Um, that's, that was the hardest scene in the movie to do because that exact scene with those exact lines, is, it would also appear in a comedy. Where the guy shows up and he's like, um, so today we got mm, China. China is big and there's robots and so, like that's the normal kind of part I wanted to do. So I had to play it in a way that I have never played that kind of scene before. And that was hard to not make it funny. That was the hardest thing to turn down any comic timing or, or tone that I might have. There's still a little funny in there too. And I watch it like, oh God, I was <laughs> a little, but it was hard. I mean, I don't, I don't think that scene could be acted without a little funny, because it's written funny. So, what are you gonna do? <laughs>